Okay, I'm on another location now. It's on the other side of the Brandywine. Now this in front of me would have been Britain Bridge Road. This road right in front of me here wouldn't have been here during this time. Now as you see off into my distance, there's an abutment for a covered bridge. That was the original covered bridge here at Britain Bridge Road. Now the other end would have been the other abutment here. Now this bridge was burnt down in the 1950s. It was never replaced. The property that you see in back of me, this is Britain's Mill. Now, Britain's Mill would have been here during the Battle of Brandywine. It would have been a, a grist mill. They would have ground flour here. Now, right where I'm standing, this is the last line. This would have been the far left of the British line here at Brandywine. Now, we're on the opposite side of the creek this time. We're not on the other side of the creek. Now, if you see in the distance where that vehicle is, that's where Sterling and Sullivan's divisions would have been stationed. They would have been stationed along those banks above there. Now, in this general area, you see there's trees. These trees wouldn't have been here. This would have been a farmer's field, all as far as the eye could see, probably most likely winter wheat. Uh, now, the British would have been in this general area where I'm standing. They would have been amassed here. This is the last position of the British line here. Now, as you see in the distance also, you see the Brandywine Creek. Now, uh, as I was saying before, this would have been a field. Uh, you would be able to see onto the other ridge like I could see today. Now as you see it snowed, uh, basically I could see some sight lines a little bit better today. Uh, now this, from this uh, position over to the American position, it looks like it's probably most likely about a quarter of a mile. Now they were in range uh, of uh, most likely cannons. Now the British had cannons at this position. They were above me right here above Britain's Ford. Now on the other side was uh, a General uh, uh, a John Sullivan's division. He would have had cannons too stationed on that ridge above me. Now most likely this was to protect the Ford. Now the British pulled their cannon here. Now the emplacements up there were most likely uh, on maps it's, it looks like it was a dug in structure. Uh, they only had their lines extended so far to the east here. Now, uh, this position was the farthest that the British went. They didn't go any further. Uh, they could have uh, stationed men a little further down, but there was no threat. The threat was right in front of them. They noticed that the line only extended this far from Chad's Ford. It only extended about a half a mile up here to Chad's Ford. Now, uh, the significance about this area was that there was a crossing here. There was a Ford. It was Britain's Ford. It was the Ford for this farmer. Now, the, the structure you see in back of me here, this is an original structure. It dates probably about to the 1715 uh, to about 1720. Now, this structure behind me is very historic. I can't get any closer than this. It's all posted uh, uh, land here. I, I'm on a, a public road here, so I can film this, 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 uh, this farm here. Now this farm right here is uh, Andrew Wyatt's studio. Now he purchased this probably back around the turn of the century. A lot of his paintings were done here. Uh, a lot of sketches were done here. Now on the, on the distance you can see, uh, there is a schoolhouse. That's where um, you know he would uh, have a studio there. But this is the property of Andrew Wyeth. Uh, now he picked this location very well. It, it, it's a very nice area. It's very uh, historic, and he's kept it the way it should be in this area. He kept it exactly like the way it would have been during the battle. Now, uh, like we were saying about the British Army being in this area, now uh, what happened was was uh, they heard firing in this area. They had musketry. They heard uh, cannonade from the north. Now what that was, that was a flanking maneuver of this army. So when the British were here, they knew that there was going to be a flanking maneuver. They didn't leave this area. But when they saw the line break, the line above you uh, extended all the way down to Chad's Ford, which was about a quarter of a mile or half a mile. Now this line went. It went up to uh, defend the flanking maneuver. Sterling, it was Sterling, it was Stevens. And it was Sullivan. There was three divisions here of about maybe most likely probably around 5,000 men. Now these men retreated. They left this area and the British saw that. Now this area on this side of the Brandywine most likely was wooded. Uh, it was a lot of woods here on this area. But on the other side of the ridge, most likely on the ridge, it was uh, uh, hilly. It wasn't farmed. It was trees on that way. But you would see the American line. You would see them all the way down the Chad's Ford from this position. Now, like I said, this road wasn't here. 
Now, the road in back of me would have been here. This road that went to this Ford was here. Most likely, it was probably uh, somewhere in back of me. Now, I'm going to pan over. What's this? Uh, uh, right where I'm standing here, there's a, a quarry. Now, this quarry uh, probably, most likely, was probably done in the 1830s. Uh, the stone here in the quarry was most likely uh, made to make the covered bridge here. Uh, the abutments for the covered bridge. They, 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 they uh, quarried the stone locally, and they just moved it to the site, which was right here, to build the covered bridge abutments. Now, uh, uh, the, the lines in front of me, the three divisions we were talking about, they broke. They broke, they went towards Birmingham, and that left the bridges here, British here with an opportunity to go around the army. Now, when the lines went, uh, the British here uh, were told to storm this position, which they did. They, they went over the Brandywine. They, uh, they, they, they jumped into Brandywine, they had their rifles above their heads, they had their ammunition uh, above their heads so they didn't get wet, and they just went into the Brandywine and, and over they went. Now when they did this, this whole field would have been filled with British. There would have been British all over here. Now when they went in this area, when the British start to leave this area over towards the other side of the Brandywine, that's when everybody went. Most likely, the, the attack was happening at Chad's Ford, and this area was uh, th this area left, and uh, they could see this this the British started to leave this area, going towards the American line. At which time, they most likely charged the positions over at the cannon positions at Proctor's Battery. Now they would have been in this field. The Americans were gone by then. Now there was no cannons over there. Nobody was firing on the British here. They were just coming across the creek. They were coming across the creek to outflank. Uh, it was actually the right of Anthony Wayne's line, which was stationed about a quarter of a mile away. Now uh, a little bit more about this area is that if you notice uh, to the distance here, you could probably talk to these guys. You could probably scream over to them. It's not very far, but it's not in musket range. They couldn't fire their weapons over here and hit or inflict uh, damage. Now, the, before the, the British left this area, most likely there was some cannonade back and forth. They were trying to knock out some of the positions here. Now, like I was saying before, uh, this would have been a farmer's field. There would have been no trees in the area. It would have been a general uh, area where people uh, amassed in certain areas. Uh, you could actually see your lines. There could have been uh, gaps in the lines in the area where people didn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, form. But it was uh, it, uh, basically in this area, they were, they were protecting this ford. So they had to have uh, uh, divisions here. But the American line didn't extend any further than this position. Uh, neither did the British line. The British line stayed uh, basically where I'm at. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan the camera over. I'm going to show you this quarry that they made uh, the, the covered up butcher mitts here. All right, well, if you see behind me, there was a quarry. I don't know if you really see it very well, but there is a quarry there. It, it was local stone. They took the stone out and they made the abutments here. Now, to, to, uh, to finish up pretty much here, like I was saying, a lot of things happened here. Uh, this was, was uh, where the flanking maneuver went on the Americans from this general area. And uh, this was a, a protected... Uh, a, a protected uh, uh, ford here. The Americans protected this ford. Now it's sad that they didn't go up any further. Uh, if they went up further, they would have uh, saw the flanking maneuver of Howe and Cornwallis. They could have uh, spotted them in the distance. But this is where the flanking maneuver had from the British on uh, the late afternoon of September 11, 1777.